Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday. But for now, it's Thursday Night Football. And on the call, as always, is Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We're about 40 miles south of Candlestick Point as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at these 49ers as they interplay here. They come in off their very first loss of the year, suffered a week ago. Yeah, it will not be a perfect season, but I'm interested to see how they bounce back now that they know that chasing the 1972 Dolphins is out the window. On the other side of the field for the visiting Giants, they've got all W's on the ledger so far. A perfect 6-0. Yeah, still a long way to go in this season, but they're showing everyone early on that they intend to be there in the end. Returning it, John Ross. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6-4. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end he's buying gifts for all the guys who have helped him <laughs> along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great I job, QB, he's usually the guy springs for the good stuff. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? It's a, who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. Caught left side. It's back in. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man of the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. The first carry for the former Nittany Lion. This is Saquon Barkley. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored, gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. They'll set up to throw. And Ingram holds it in. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And a nice gain of 21 yards. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up the first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. They'll get to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork we saw, a good job defensively to recover. Position on him, and he pulls it in. 
It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Watch it now, Marty! Marty! Go on, go on! Go on, go on! They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And he's got his man, Beckham. Touchdown, Giants. Beckham with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Giants are going to take a first quarter lead. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Remember oh, yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. So they get in for the opening drive score and they go for two. They, they kept the kicker lonesome over there. They said, we don't need you this time. <laughs> kickers? Who needs kickers for PATs? Be nice now. We want them for field goals, go. not for PATs. They went for two and got it. It's a new tone setter for this team. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. They'll be led out by their quarterback standing at 6-2 from Eastern Illinois. It's Jimmy Garoppolo. And no excitement, unless, he, unless you're on the defensive team of last week, in his numbers. Because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown pass. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So, I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, footwork, finding the right targets. And bottom line, how do they get a win? And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Yes, indeed. That play there, that reminds me of some of the guys that I played with to have that suddenness, able to get into the backfield almost about the time the ball snapped and make a play. How about that tackle for a loss? Yeah, absolutely. He did a lot of that last week when he was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. One of the guys on the team would say, hey, yeah, we called him the disruptor. And that's carrying forward again. Makes sense, doesn't it? Give him 30 yards there. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock the deep under a heavy rush and down he goes. Two sacks last week, another one right here. He's been unblockable lately, and I think that goes all the way back to not just his offseason, but the film study he's been doing during the week because I think he's found matchups that he likes and he's capitalizing. And a few times, he's even defeated double teams. He doesn't care at this point. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. All start offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Now it's Greta. Now that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Now Garoppolo. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. You've called plenty of games in your career. Do you believe in momentum, my man? I do, and I think we're seeing it right here. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The run that he's been on. How about that? Three sacks in a game a week ago, and another one right here. Oh, he's feeling it in a big way. A great blocking nearly sprung in there. 28-yard return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and ten. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw left side complete to Ingram. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. 
Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult Let's time. Go. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. It's a gain of four there, and it gives them a new set of downs. Let's face it, you always want a team full of guys who can get your first downs and big plays of all styles, but you've got to have a big man. You can just turn and hand it to, and he can be the... And a big loss here as he's taken down. Solomon Thomas able to get in and run him down for what will be a loss of 15 yards. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Left side here to Sanders. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. A first down carry for Barkley. He will push his way down to about the 14. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They'll set up a throw. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be what he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. And when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Now, that's disappointing for the defense. They had the advantage, had excellent coverage all over the field, but they let him get away, scramble, and pick up a first down and inside the five-yard line. And he will score. Touchdown, Giants. It's their quarterback with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. He hit him earlier in this first quarter with his arm. Now he does it with his legs. Right now, he's one of those stat stuffers that you see on the basketball court. You know, the guy with points. And New York set to take the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back them up five. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. After the penalty, they go with Barkley. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. One quarter in the books here on a Thursday night. 15-0 our score. We're back to Santa Clara.
after this. The NFL on E is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And this is caught inside the five. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Odell Beckham. Gold now out to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here's Emmanuel Sanders now as he and the rest of the offense march back onto the field. Sitting right around the midpoint of the season, on pace for 1,000 yards. Good year so far, and I'm sure Phil's study being devoted to him a little bit more on the other side. They have to because the pace that he's carrying right now, if you're, if you're pushing a 1,000-yard pace as a receiver, that means he warrants your attention. And right now, precision is going on with their offense, kind of like that timepiece you wear on your wrist, you know, the good stuff. Got to knock that off somehow. Chip away at that timing. Change things up a little bit and make them go to other things and make them do those things better. Yeah, try to make him uncomfortable. Not many teams have been able to do that so far this year. Looking to throw. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they finally get him, but not before he reaches the 33-yard line. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. They'll look to throw. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Only a yard there on the keeper, but that's all he needed. First down. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. Go on, go on. A handoff to Barkley. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the court. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Solomon Thomas in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. He'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. throw here to the sideline and he's got it 
They say the feet are down. Yes, the line judge says they're in. That'll be a first down. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Rhett Ellison, his first touchdown. Play fake here on first down. Eluding the pressure right. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. They'll set up the screen to Barkley, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Out of the gun now on third down. Open man right side is Ingram. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to that Philly, here we go. They'll look to throw now on first down. And the Niners get there and bring him down. DeForest Buckner in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they're throwing it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the safety, Jack Whiskey Tart. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive in the second half. Pretty big deficit though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. He lost four there, and it's third down. Well, if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. Play action, Garoppolo. Open man is Pettis, it's complete. And they get 14 yards there at a first down. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down, spectacular catch, turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. 
They go play action here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Throwing his Garoppolo on third down. Oh, good one, able to haul it in. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A gain of 32 that time. Here's the Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. It's caught inside the 25. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And give him a gain of 37. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They'll go to Barkley again. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. A 5-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that 4-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Leopard! Leopard! Detroit! Back to throw. Flush to his right. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Hurry up, here we go. Green 39. Green 39. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Saquon Barkley, his sixth touchdown. Here's Juszczyk. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And that's tough duty for a strong safety because truly he's a hybrid-type player. A pass defender, which makes him more of a defensive back, but really his tackling ability is like a linebacker. So they don't mind coming up and taking those guys on, but that's a tough task there, taking on the big fella. He's going to float this one deep right. He's got a man complete. And now off to the races, down the right side. And all the way in, touchdown, New York. A big play there. With touchdown number seven on the year.
Garoppolo now. First down throw. Over the middle, and he's got Goodwin complete. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. First target, first catch, and a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. To throw, it's Garoppolo. And this is caught at the end. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now Garoppolo on the bootleg. His pass caught at the 4. And he'll be brought down here at the 3-yard line. He'll get only 2 there at its 2nd and goal. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. They'll try to run with Breida. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And that'll make it third and goal. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak. Not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. This will be caught at about the five. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. They're able to hold them to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin, fourth quarter. You're going. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out. Dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. And that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. But 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speak. And this will be caught at the 30. A big 30-yard play. third so now then the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now first and 10 here's a give to Barkley and an alley to run and down inside the 15 shy of the 10 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top ten units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And he'll get this one down to about the ten-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. 
Rudolph looking to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Giants. In for the score. And the Giants have got it on cruise control. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. It's been... here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. The best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments, and right now, I think this team needs to open things up. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Garoppolo to throw on second down. Incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. We got three. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. That's complete to Meredith. He's at the 30, past the 20, touchdown, 49ers. Cameron Meredith, his first touchdown on the year. And the 49 Start out on the ground and Saquon Barkley. And it'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. It's a seven yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So after three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one, despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Now Saquon Barkley, and a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down bottom line they want to keep this clock rolling so they'll take that one right there they just want to keep falling forward and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home all right now lucky 56 on second down here's barkley and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line call it a loss of two on the play and they're gonna face a third down now it's Rudolph. And Ingram holds it in. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. They'll get it to the 23-yard line. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big games. 
They'll run with Barkley. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Giants, their winning ways continue as they get it up to 7-0. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for San Francisco, the loss will drop them to 4-2 and two on the year. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Seattle Seahawks. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.